control de manifestaciones y o municiones no letales, las cuales pueden causar el riesgo de heridas a los que permanezcan. the city of Pittsburgh chief police. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. By order of the city of Pittsburgh chief police. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. I order all those assembled to immediately disperse. You must leave the immediate vicinity. If you remain in this immediate vicinity, you will be in violation of the Pennsylvania Crimes Code, no matter what your purpose is. They don't make any noise and they are invisible. And some are visible, some are, you know, just outside. You have, you know, in the infrared range. What's emerging now are weapon, laser weapons, where the effect is that of the laser. And they can be hole burners, what we call very high energy laser, because with the concentrated energy, uh, you can literally drill holes, you know, in, in a target. As you can see, the effect of ADS immediately distracts the destructive activity. The ADS crew continues to engage the demonstrators, repelling them until the group moves away and is no longer a threat. The research and certainly the concepts for uh, direct energy weapons go back many decades. Uh, what is happening is that the technology has now advanced sufficiently that we're starting to see the weapons come into fruition. In other words, they're becoming real. There are several types of directed energy weapons, and basically what they do is they're known as speed of light because they shoot electrons very fast over very long distances. Uh, lasers, of course, are in the light range. Uh, then there's microwave weapons that are operating at other frequencies. But basically, they're beam weapons uh, in which nothing phys physical goes out. The electrons move, but the, uh, the kinetic weapons you talk about, you're shooting big bullets to go out and physically hit and destroy something. These work because the energy is deposed on the target and causes some effect. Can, can I ask you a question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology? Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness, um, it is. It is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to? Do you have anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I. Mm -hmm. I it's, I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. The, the, in, in the normal order of things, when you invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectations that one would use it. Uh, on the other hand, the real world intervenes from time to time and you reach in there and take something out that is still in a developmental stage and you might use it. So it, the an I, it's not, your question is not answerable. It, is, it, is, uh, it depends on what happens in the future and how, how well things move along the track and whether or not someone feels it's appropriate to reach into a development stage and see if something might be useful, as was the case with the unmanned aerial vehicles. But you sound like you're willing to experiment with it. I, I think that's the point. And I think, and it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight even before they've been fully <laughs> wrung out. And I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high-powered microwave, uh, but, but sure. And, yes. and we will continue to do that. ...to use human test subjects, we will examine one facet of the arsenal of these non-lethal weapons. Cyclotronic resonance refers to the ability to resonate or spin small particles with a given resonance frequency. Military doctrine for non-lethal weapons in this area is as follows. Initially, enemy armies or populations can be exposed to, sprayed with, 
a very small amount of chemical or biological agent. The quantity of chemical or biological agent used may be so small as to be virtually undetectable. Following exposure, the enemy population may be targeted with microwave or radio frequency radiation in the exact resonance frequency of the chemical or biological agent used. The toxic agent will begin to resonate or spin and will react with much greater speed or activity within the bodies of the target population, similar to the behavior of enzymes that make life possible. This greater reactivity may be millions of times greater than normal and would behave as if the person had been given a massive dose of chemical or biological agent, enough in fact to cause death. Cyclotronic resonance of chemical and biological agents allows entire armies or populations to be destroyed with only minute amounts of the agent in their bodies if they are attacked with non-lethal microwave weapons afterwards. It will be impossible to develop and deploy such a weapon without first testing it. These tests are actually being done on American citizens in their own homes. This is just one aspect of the non-lethal weapons testing that is being done on several thousand people.